Okay, friends, welcome back to the Called to Lead podcast. You guys are in for a huge treat today, and I don't think my guest needs much introduction because she's already been on the podcast once, and it's one of, if the most top performing episodes I think I've ever done. So in the house today, I've got the lovely Jackie Richards. She's one of my saint sisters and we have just been catching up and, you know, kind of reminiscing on some crazy stuff we've been through in our journey in business. And I'm so excited to let you know, if you didn't already, that she has a podcast herself called The Jackie Richards Show, where it's a way that she can exemplify what got her started in her business, which was learning from other people through podcasts. So mm-hmm. definitely check out that podcast. But we have the amazing opportunity to pick the brain of the Jackie Richards today in regards to team building, looking back to where she started and also where she is now, which is helping a lot of social sellers and influencers who've built massive teams who aren't really duplicating. So wherever you are in that spectrum, Jackie's bringing the gold as always today. So Jackie, thank you for being here. I am so happy to be back. I am actually really honored to be back. So thank you for inviting me. And I can't wait to dive into this juicy topic. Well, I'm excited um, to link the episode in case people missed it from last time. And in that episode, we were talking about how you took an intentional break from social media, you know, due to burnout. So we won't get so much into that, but, you know, that I definitely want to make sure to link that episode because Jackie really shares her heart in a really vulnerable place of when she went through a tough season in her business. So definitely check that out. But also, Jackie, how are you feeling? It's been like over a year, I think, since we did that. Do you have an update when it comes to Yeah. Update is I'm doing so good. (laughs) I mean, really, I feel like I have established so many more boundaries for myself, my family, my team, my use of social media. I'm taking vitamins. I'm going to bed at reasonable hours. I'm not running nearly as many Zoom calls as I used to. I am feeling so good in this season of life. Oh, that's so encouraging. And I know as we were chatting right before this, I know that everybody listening to this is in a different season and some people are in a season of struggle and Mm -hmm. some people might be in a season of flourishing, which both of those can be really overwhelming. And so, you know, I know that just from even talking to my community that that team building in general and duplication within team building in particular is something that I think a lot of people are struggling with, whether or not they're having personal results or not. And so I want you to kind of start, because we touched on this a little bit, but I for you to go back to like 2018 mm-hmm. or 2017, even yeah, probably 2017, Jackie, if not prior, because when you started this thing, mm-hmm. you, your business surely did not look like where it is now, which is thousands and thousands of teamies, you know, hundreds of, I don't even know how many followers you have on socials and all that good stuff. But take us back to the beginning when you didn't have a team and you had to do the groundwork. What did that look like for you? Yeah, I think <clears throat> in the very beginning, I was, I was, very grounded in my belief that this was going to work. And I, and I say that before I tell you what I did, what I did, because I think it's really important that that network marketers or anyone building a team does that because it's a really heavy task to take on team building. It's really, it's something where it can feel really daunting where, you know, my first rank in our comp plan was two people, two people active and doing something in their own business. But I was fully sold that it would eventually be very soon 200 people. And I feel like I had this like delusional belief of that. (laughs) Or we could also call it like faith that I knew it was going to happen. And I talked about that on my podcast, just really having like this, like knowing of like, this is going to happen and this is what it's going to feel like. But what I did to not get overwhelmed was I I just started with with the behaviors that were were super small and, and what many would consider maybe overlooked or unassuming. So that, that looked like to me just starting with my contacts list in my phone. Like the night I enrolled in a company, I messaged the closest people to me and let them know that, you know, if, if it was like, I didn't just message everyone on my contact list, but my girlfriends that I know wore makeup and liked makeup, I was like, do this with me. Like, let's go tonight. And with that very simple approach, I had two or three people signing up with me in the same hour, which I know that that's not, duplicatable for everyone but at the same time maybe it is <laughs> like i think everyone kind of writes that approach off but i started with that right away and what you know fast forward 3 months of being brand new in a company i i, I just did those little unassuming things or, or i was just talking to people around me letting them know that i'm doing this and i feel like there that is a that is a very 
un- underused approach is just proudly telling people that I'm doing this. <laughs> and I did that a lot. Like as my family knew I was doing this. I wasn't trying to do it under the table secretly. I feel like that's just such a a way to like not make traction is by secretly doing your company. But I was proudly doing my company. I was going live. I was talking about it. But then if we can go into this topic, I did some pretty cringe things. <laughs> so if you want me to unba- unbox that, I can because I do feel like there is maybe some learning you could do from that. <laughs> do you want me to go into that? Can I talk about it? Okay. Yes. Okay. So this, I'm going to just normalize this, I guess. I'm going to normalize that when you are ignorance on fire, which I feel like I still have a little bit of that in me with my podcast right now, like I just, Heather was just showing me some cool editing techniques and I was like, oh my gosh, I know nothing about this, but you know, we're on fire and we're still going to record, you know, record an episode tomorrow or whatever. But in the beginning, I, I definitely did behaviors that I would not encourage, but this is going to sound bad or a little bit controversial, but I'm kind of glad I did. And and like, I, I don't know, the MLM police could come for me on that, but like I did some, a lot of cold reach outs and yeah, they were ick and I definitely soiled relationships and like it wasn't, I would never coach someone to do what I did, but I don't regret what I did because it brought me to where I am now where I learned that I didn't spontaneously combust because I reached out to a makeup artist in my area that I had no idea who she was, but I did it on Instagram and I, you know, and I offered, I pitched her it and that's what we would call friends, a cold reach out. And honestly, I I don't encourage it, but In doing so, I just, I, I don't know. I, it built a lot of like, I, what's the word I'm looking for, Heather, where I just was like, I don't know. Resilience, like, cause I think you have to like, you know, yeah, like I hard stuff and, and the hard, hard experiences are for us. Like when we get the things wrong, we learn from it, but beautiful things can come from that. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes. So probably 99% of my cold reach outs did not work. But it was like this exercise of like where I learned that like, oh my gosh, if I could ask this lady, I could ask someone, I could ask a friend to to do something with me or to do this, you know, class with me or whatever it may be that you guys host in your company. But so I did a lot of that in the beginning, like a lot. And I really do credit that to where I am today. But I did that with, this is where I think it goes different for other people is that I did that with this really grounded belief of like, I'm going to reach out, but it has this, her response has no reflection of where I'm going to go rank wise. <laughs> like I would do these reach outs and I would talk to people and, and, and for a good solid six months, y'all, I, I mean, I could be canceled. <laughs> With the amount of with the amount of reach outs I did, but it literally held no weight in my belief and in my faith of where I was going. So it was just, but yet I knew it just needed to be done. I don't know if that makes sense. Heather, am I making sense? No, it makes perfect sense. And I think I think like the big like principally because there's a million ways to do it, right? And you'll, there are even literal books like written by network marketing, you know, mm-hmm. that you know, I think got a lot of things wrong that said like, make a list of a hundred people and send them. Yeah. And And I did. Coachable. And you're doing what, you know, what, what was taught, which did kind of create a little bit of a bad bad thing. But the principle is you started from that place of the foundation of a clear vision for what you wanted, a belief that you could do it, which led to choosing faith over fear. Cause was it scary to send those messages? Not really. I probably got a high from, I'm different. I'm a different breed. Listen, so just to be clear, you guys, I am not telling anyone to do that. I'm just trying to rewind back to where I was in my mindset. And to me, I just, I knew I, this is the, this is what network marketing is. You take something and you, or you take nothing and you turn it into something. And that's what I was doing is I was like, I don't have anyone to talk to. Well, then I'm going to go search the hashtag of my city and add the word makeup artist at the end of it. And that's, that was just me, I guess, building my confidence that I could, <laughs> I could build up relationships. And it was probably, it, and that's, but honestly, and that's the whole rabbit hole of, of where I come in now, you guys, social media is so much better now. Like, are you kidding me? Like, let's get a real strategy and like, let's like talk about how you use Instagram stories to, to actually, you know, like, I feel like there's just so much more knowledge now around social media that you can, you don't have to go down that dark route. And I don't want anyone to, but it was building that confidence that, I could get going. So let's talk about it though. Let's let, let's actually go into the, the successful reach outs because the cold ones were not the move, but they did build my confidence. And that's an unpopular opinion that cold, cold reach outs are canceled now, but they did give me a backbone that 
kind of taught me that like you got this girl like we let's keep going does that make sense makes sense I love I love that you're saying that. That's my favorite thing about you, Jackie. I know, I know. Okay, but just so we're clear and that it's put in the show notes, I am not encouraging behavior. I just I'm not I just think that it's important that we we grow from every experience. And I did. I grew bigger and better from my cold reach out. So I eventually learned that that was not the move and that I needed to focus on my actual true, true, true warm market. And um, that looked like my my family and you know, maybe college roommates, things like that. And so I would just simply reach out to them and and talk to them about their current. We are in the in a makeup company. So I'd be like, let's talk about your current makeup routine. What are you using? What are you loving? Like, are you open to trying what I have? Can I invite you to this, this VIP group and where you learn more about the makeup that I love? Is that a fit for you? So a lot of conversations like that in the very, very beginning. And for me, Heather, it looked like every single day I it was my goal to do something or have a conversation that made my hands shake. So I think that that was really powerful for me because it it meant that I couldn't just be doing the easy behaviors, which for me, what's always come naturally is Instagram stories or maybe tootling around on Canva and making a little graphic, doing even just doing like an eyeshadow makeup look and like taking a picture. Like I would, I did those things. And technically some people will be like, oh, you worked your business. But for me, my litmus test in 2017 was you have to do something that makes you like almost nauseous. Well, you and, know, yeah. I just remembered something, Jackie, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I can remember just being again, like a friend and sideline in that journey. Didn't you even go on a, like, you were honest about the fact that you didn't know much about makeup even, and then you went and learned, like you were coachable and educated yourself and then learned out loud. So now here you are with this as a makeup expert, but like you weren't at the time, you just, oh my gosh, yeah, out loud, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely did. I, there, I did many live videos around like, Hey, like I'm a complete beginner, but let's, it, it was kind of the same approach, Heather, that I used with sharing my opportunity, which was like, do this with me. Like, so I reached, reached out to friends. I was like, I don't know, sign up with me with this company. Like, let's see where this goes. And then I took that same approach to even the product, which was like, learn with me, like walk, grow with me. Like, let's become, let's become more proficient in makeup together and kind of holding that feeling in my content was definitely what I did in the beginning. So, but I, I definitely think conversations though are underrated. So that's something that like, I would just encourage any listeners to take a hard look in the mirror at not necessarily your content. And I would, I am a self-professed content queen. Like I love content, but take, become a conversations queen. That That's ultimately what led me to being, a, I don't, what am I allowed to say? That's what's led me to being a top leader is actually my conversations, not necessarily my content. Content has has furthered everything and deepened all of that, but conversations are actually where you where you want to take a hard look at your business. I love that. And the thing is, is you can have conversations without the content. The content is what is creating the conversations that are allowing mm-hmm. you to go deeper, right? Like it's not like they mm-hmm. were. Yep. Yeah, exactly. The, the, and, and that should be great news to many listeners that like, it's not your virality. It's not your following count. That will all come. I'm a living, breathing, you know, example of that. It all comes. But I yeah, I made a lot of money for a long time without that aspect of my business. And it looked a lot like just inviting customers to learn more about either the product or the opportunity. Like, it's just as simple as that. Like, there's a fork in the road and you have someone within your warm market. Usually it's a customer. And it's like, can I tell you more about this? Or, you know, tell me, or having the customer tell tell me more about you so I can see what is a fit, whether it's more product knowledge or opportunity knowledge. But it does start with taking an interest in people. And that can be a rabbit hole for us too, is that leading is caring about other people. Mm. Okay, let's talk about that because I know you work closely with Bob Heilig and I love him. Talk about it, him on, on the podcast all the time. And I know one of the things that I've learned from him is that leaders, and I see this all the time in our companies, that they'll see someone who has a big following or they mm-hmm. might be a top seller. And this isn't to say, because some people choose that path and they sh- they have the freedom to be able to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but they see them as a top leader or they see them as a leader. But I know Bob would say that, you know, leadership comes from inspiring others and equipping others, which brings a more fulfilling type of freedom, I think, than than when you're the only one that's like benefiting from it. And so, you know, I think it is like a little bit of a sticky subject when it comes to like leading versus selling. And absolutely, you're an example of you can do both. You absolutely can do both. But let's let's maybe dive into that. Like for someone like who wants, who maybe is experiencing success themselves, but feels the call to lead, if you will. I mean, it's the name of the dang podcast, right? Like they feel that calling for more. Maybe they're burned out themselves or feeling like they're working a full-time job or, you know, whatever that looks like for them. Like what, what would be your advice in terms of making the time and space and energy for the conversation piece that's required to bring that requirement? Yeah. Okay. So to answer your question, Heather, I do feel like I have to add a disclaimer to to myself because I am an anomaly. I just flat out am. So let me just tell you a little bit about my anomalies and maybe the listeners will relate to this or maybe they'll be like, I'm just not like that. It is, I used to be so embarrassed of the fact that I'm not a numbers person. Like I, my brain just literally goes to mush. You tell me anything percentage wise, numbers wise, you ask me anything about my team. I know the the number of people on my team because I can see that clear as day at the bottom of my back office. I know how much I made last month because I could see that clear state. But if you were to ask me like anything about conversions or anything like that, I used to be so embarrassed that I can't talk that language. But over time, you know, seven years in the business, I have come to realize it's actually my superpower and it's a God-given gift that I do not do numbers. So how am I going to tie this into being a top seller? I, for many years... We know this in network marketing that we say this all the time. You're going to do work that you're not going to get paid for. And I just knew that. Like, because I'm not a numbers person, I literally would never. I, I, one time my husband told me what I make hourly at Saint. <laughs> he like broke down and he's like, Do you know what you make? I'm like, No, I don't. Like, I literally don't. And, and again, I see that now as a superpower because I, understand and I understood that doing leadership meant just doing a ton of work that you weren't going to get paid for, but eventually you would. And I think what happens sometimes with high performing women that can sell a lot is they sometimes are numbers driven, very, very much so want to like, they know that if I sell this amount, I'm going to get this amount. And I just, I'm not that way. So what I'm about to say might not be that relatable. So do you want me to continue? Do you get where I'm going with this, Heather? I do, do want you to continue because like, well, I have so many thoughts, but one, okay. yeah. yes, we all have our superpower. And like, if that's not your superpower, like it is, you know, it's my superpower. So it's like, just point people oh. to me. And I point people to you when it comes yeah. to, you know, so we can work. That's the beauty of a team, right? Even if it's not, we're not directly benefiting, you know, from each other, even because we're not on the same team. It's like we get to use those superpowers that we all exist. So I, I love, 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 love that. But yes, I think I think you're onto something because I think you're you're speaking to the hearts and minds of someone. Because I actually yeah. think me at the beginning of my business too, because I what I technically was, believe it or not, I was a top seller and say like, huh? No, I remember I sold like six or seven thousand yeah. dollars at the time, but it was top ten in the company, and I was very driven. That's I told Sarah, my my mentor, I said you know, I don't have ambitions to build a team because I don't have time for that. And I know that I can make, you know, thousands of dollars selling. The it bank. was a very one plus one equals two thing. Yes. And I think that it's like that for a lot of top sellers and a lot of people that take more of the the affiliate route with these network marketing companies, which you guys, we love that. Like, I think it's just such a, it's such a blessing. Like, I just love our industry. I think it's so cool that we can reward people that are like, I'm in here to do a job and get paid for it. And I know that I, I'm, you fully believe in your own abilities, but I do feel like there is this like, very magical side of leadership where things are not an equation. People are not an equation. And you cannot say, I'm going to build, the, I mean, and and I've watched people do this where it's like, I'm going to build this leg to be one, you know, it, they, I need a, a pod of eight people to light up like a Christmas tree on this day of the month. And then, and then all of a sudden I am quote unquote worthy because I am this ring. And I, I've never resonated with that. I I just, I don't know. Like, it's just not my style. And I just, I think that when that happens, we're taking almost an equation approach to something that is so much more, this is going to sound cheesy, but sacred. People are sacred. And I just feel like it can be tedious. It can be tedious and it can be, you know, like, 
what's the point of reaching out to this person and asking her how her, you know, past three months have been because she was MIA all summer. So leadership is this just magical world where I don't know. I, I don't know the equation of what I'm making on people because I don't put numbers on them, but I can sit here right now and tell you guys, you know, I'm not going to say what I make or anything like that, but I live a very comfortable life. And I think it's because I, I have ventured off away from equations of like, I need to make the 40% commission of the max, whatever. And I, and I put people first and that's been really, really fun to see that you can make a lot of money just loving people and, and venturing off into a non-numerical way of leadership. So we didn't really answer the question. Girl, I kind of teed it. Questions. A lot of times like the the how, kind of like your example at the beginning is it's not the what or the how to do it. Because it's not that, you know, people in, in any of these scenarios that we're talking about don't know what to do or how to do it. They have to feel that inspiration and the deeper desire or belief to do it. And I think that that comes from sharing. Like, I mean, this is really, really powerful, really, really powerful. And it definitely plays into what I've been chatting. I did a, a recent podcast talking about the importance of people over profitability. Yes, mm -hmm. business, you want to have a profitable of any kind of business. You want it to be profitable. But the way that you do that is by putting people first. And, mm -hmm. and you're a living, breathing example of why, of how that works. And, and people look at what you're doing now, which is creating amazing mm -hmm. content and attracting yeah. followers and like all of these things. And they think like, oh, if I do that, then I'll have what Jackie has. But that's not what you did. You put, oh. you put people first and you still do. And then that's where the blessing has come from on the back end. Right. You know, and that's not to say you guys, I've always been perfect. Like that I've always just been this like Mother Teresa of network marketing. No, 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 no. Do I get frustrated? Yes. Have I had like really sticky situations arise? And we can unpack too, like the the lack of boundaries that I've also um, not had for many years because I always put people first. So there's, there's like a lot of rabbit holes here, you guys. But I will, I do remember back in 2020, I had hired my first, first business coach and, and I was experiencing a, a mini burnout then too, when I was working with him. And I remember the first thing he challenged me to do, I was expecting him to give me this great big strategy on like how to like, to, you know, double my team size and all this. And my first assignment from him, and I'll always be forever grateful for what he taught me was, he's like, you are going to print out your front line and you're going to call your, he's like, I give you seven days and you need, he's like, you need to go through that list and just pick up the phone and call these people and ask them how, how their life is. And I was like, well, are we, are we like strategizing a rank? Are we like trying to give, am I trying to give them, you know, scripts for conversations to book parties, you know, cause, cause you guys, granted, I'm not a numbers person, but I am a very action oriented person. So what, what I lack in like being smart with numbers, I make up for in like my action and my blind action, I should say. But so I did a lot of that and it did turn me into a very still transactional, not numerical, but transactional. And that was a really cool experience in 2020 when he was like, nope, we're going to just call and just be a human. And he grounded me in that moment and that I needed to just go and be there for people. And what I think happens with top performing, you know, network marketers is that becomes tedious. Where is the payoff? What do you mean I'm going to call her? I'm going to ask her how her summer is. Well, if I did another reel, it would probably make me more money. So and I'm, and you're not wrong, my friend, but that is, again, the magical, sacred world. I'm going to use the word sacred. Some people are going to roll their eyes, but I don't care because it's not, you can't put a number on it because you do not know what could happen or come from taking a moment to love on someone that at one point thought, you know what, I think I want to work with this girl. Like, I think I feel something. And I, and I think, you know, <clears throat> again, not to make this all like weird and like wooey, but I do feel like the stars align or God puts people on our paths for, you know, if whether it's a live video that you watched, you know, five years ago and you signed up with someone or, you know, whatever, a reel where you, someone drew you in. I do, I don't feel like there's like a lot of accidents. I feel like that's usually like people are drawn to you. So if you have someone in your back office right now that accidentally, I'm using air quotes, found you, it wasn't an accident, but that you a conversation or a reach out where you're like, tell me about yourself. I mean, we hardly connected a year and a half ago when you signed up, but I want to know about you. But if you took the time to do five minute, those types of things, I think a lot of, we would see a lot more leadership arise out of reps in all kinds of companies. 
that are just high performers, but all of a sudden it's bleeding down into other people. I 100 million percent agree. And I think that this podcast is a perfect example of like, we don't always know. And that's my favorite thing about Jackie's podcast is she's like, I don't know how to do a podcast. I Googled and I hit record. <laughs> she's like, and then I'm like, oh, do this, do this, you know, because I've been doing it for mm -hmm. years now. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things like when you take that imperfect action and you, you know, choose faith over fear, just like we're doing in this podcast, like the result of it, like I feel like you and I are literally unlocking the piece, probably even some of our confusion in terms of leadership of, of the puzzle of like, how, how is it that someone can have such big success, you know, personally, and it's a small facet, but then, but then struggle. But then you've got this bigger group of people who are struggling, you know, and it's like, and we're in the same company. Like, how does this work? And I think that like principally your story and like us just talking mm -hmm. through this to me is like opening up so much clarity. And I right. hope and pray that it's opening up clarity for those listening to that mm -hmm. when you put people first and that's even like the gospel is like, love God, love people. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> no, totally. And I am having that same epiphany in my head right now too, where it's, it's, you are relying on man when you rely on yourself only because you're like, I know what I'm capable of. I know that tomorrow at 8am I can wake up and I can film 15 reels and that I can do my reach outs and I can do my, uh, like it is, you're like, you're literally saying, I trust me, I trust man, but then what does it look like to put trust in other people? What does it look like to bring someone in? You know, does that make sense? Like it, in the realm of team, it is all of a sudden this unbridled love for other people. And it's scary. And I think that's why a lot of high performing reps will be like, nope, I am safe. I will keep me safe. But there is so much trust and faith that is unlocked when you're like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do some, some activities that you can't put a number on. You, I don't know if it's going to make me zero dollars or one day it's going to make me a million dollars, but I'm going to go care for other people. And let, and if you need to set a timer because you're still type A, set a timer. Give yourself 20 minutes of, of loving time where it's like, I'm going to just go send some voice messages to those on my team or I'm going to re reach out. I'm going to see if I can book some calls. I'm going to go live in my team page, like whatever it may be. But I do think that that, that is what I mean when I say that that's the magical, aka faithful area that that unlocks so much success in your guys' business. It's like, what would that look like if you had every single day a timer set for 20 minutes where you just went and just did love, loving leadership? Yeah, and I, I guarantee you that someone who feels like they don't have the time to do that or the energy to do that, if they did it, I guarantee you that would bring them the biggest results on the back end of their business, which is- It would be therapeutic too. Like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> But it would uh, because they're burnt out. And so, but, but think about this, you guys, like how, how do you feel when you, I don't know, when, when someone's broke down on the side of the road and you stop and you help them and they, granted you're running late for whatever, but you stop and help them. Or how does it feel when you, when your neighbor needs something from you and you actually have the cup of sugar to lend them or whatever? I'm just using a really like arbitrary examples, but you feel good. <laughs> like you feel good, but and I think that that's just, it's a becoming a little bit of a lost art in our industry it is because, because we are, the, the money is there to make, the money is there to go viral. The money is there to be a huge sensation, selling, 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 selling. And you did that. And you did that. Yeah, you did. But what does it look like when we take the time to care again, which is like kind of how our comp plans are set up across the board. <laughs> it's wild. So I'm not telling you guys to go just like become the most like walked over leader on the planet earth where you just open up all your hours of all your days to take every one on one call and message everyone and they get to just dump on your doorstep. No, 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 no. There is an art to boundaries, but um, there is so much power in just taking time to care. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm, I don't have any time. It's like you have 20 minutes a day because you had 20 minutes to make that second or third reel. <laughs> Like, <laughs> all right. So you get me. Oh my God. I love this so, so, so much, Jackie. And I love you. And I'm so grateful that we've been able to have this conversation. I know we could keep going, but we will keep going on your podcast. Yeah. Well. Um, and I'm sure that we can, you know, continue this conversation. So make sure you're following Jackie on <laughs> Instagram and in all the places at the Jackie Richards. And then obviously her show as well. 
And yeah, let's let's keep, I, I feel like we're so aligned in this, even if we do our businesses totally differently, which is what we're going to talk about on yours, your podcast. But it, you know, it, that's the beautiful thing is there's a million ways to do it. And your example and your journey here at Saint and in your learning out loud now and serving people even beyond Saint is, is really inspiring to me. And I'm just, I'm grateful for you to take the time to share it with me. And thank you so much for having me. You're amazing. Yay. <laughs>